the, the next section was called History. And it said, it would be helpful to have a short overview of Egypt and Sudan history. Now, that's a tall order, you know. But let's just say this, that uh, when we, I, I, use the his, I would use the word history, uh, in fact, to describe a chronological sequence of likely interconnected societies. So I don't confine the word history to the period of writing, which has been common in Western discourse at all. So when we talk about early history, we can talk, let's start with the period of food production, otherwise called the Neolithic in some places, although that's not a word we always use now. And so we have an early Neolithic culture in the sixth millennium and uh, uh, fifth millennia uh, in, in the Sudan, uh, and as, as well as in Egypt. We have earlier evidence, perhaps, of domesticated cattle or uh, cattle under uh, domestication in the Sahara Desert. We have a series of cultures uh, in, the, in the Sahara that, that clearly indicate, based on their tool types and their pottery, that they may be antecedent, that they may be ancestral to the uh, cultures in the Nile Valley. So one of the early cultures in Nubia, for example, we'll talk about Nubia first, is the A-group culture, which was a Neolithic culture, food producing. A-group Nubia may, in fact, or seems to have had a relationship with the Nakata period <coughs> cultures in Egypt. They may actually have a common root and a common origin. By the end of the A-group, we have uh, kingdoms. We have the kingdom of Kustu, where we have a white crown scene. Uh, we also have that in Nakata three cultures in Egypt as well. Uh, at one time, uh, some thought it was a simple uh, diffusion of this idea from one direction to the other, but clearly they were all a, a part of a, a common matrix, and that's only been sh uh, demonstrated even more and more by certain archaeologists. Uh, later on in Nubia, you have a culture that's been called the C Group. Down in the Sudan, uh, simultaneously with that culture, you have the emergence of the core of what would later be the kingdom, the, uh, the Kush Empire or the Kush state and the Napadan kingdom that eventually many years later comes to occupy the throne of Egypt. Uh, and uh, at other moments in time, uh, the Egyptians actually occupy Nubia. Uh, later on, Nubia uh, uh, gains its autonomy uh, again, or the Egyptians leave for whatever reason. You have a period called the Meroitic period, and then the Christian period, and then the Islamic period uh, in Nubia. In Egypt itself, we have uh, an early Neolithic period followed by commonly what's called the pre-dynastic period. That in turn is followed by the early dynastic period, which leads to the Old Kingdom, uh, then the Middle Kingdom, and then the New Kingdom, uh, punctuated by some periods of, of unrest called intermediate periods. After the New Kingdom, we have something called the Late Period, and in the Late Period uh, is the period of, of uh, more invasions from without, including the Greeks, the Romans, uh, and I guess you could include the, the, and, and the, and the conquest or the restorationist uh, uh, perspective of the Nubian pharaohs who came in the 25th dynasty as a part of the late period. The big difference between them and people like the Persians and, and other people that came from the Near East and Europe is that uh, the Kushites saw themselves as restorers of an ancient Egyptian past. They saw themselves as, as unifiers and, and, and restorers of, of Nile Valley culture.